just was, which I didn't realize all these uh, artists and writers and film people that for years have been going there. We didn't realize mm. that. But they, they, when I was reading about the history, they claimed that it goes back 53,000 years. 53, the Neanderthal the a man, they found a tooth. And so that, I oh. thought, wow, even the Neanderthal man thought it was a it was great place. A cave. There was a cave outside of Sitges that they discovered the remains. Yeah, crazy. And evidently, yes, yeah, the oldest remains in Spain that they found there. Yes, I'm yeah, just looking up. It has, it has got Neolithic human yeah, proof yeah. from being there. Yeah, Amazing. And you, well, I, I didn't actually know any of that. We, we did know it was... A, and Sitges yeah, evidently famous. is named after silos. Oh, that's right. Which yeah. were used to store grain and, and, and that, stuff. That's oh. right, yeah, yeah. Ah, okay. Days, well, they had the Romans there, my the God. Romans, yeah. They've been through lots of wars yeah. and lots of... Well, I didn't... Oh, yeah. Only recently looking into that yeah. much history. We always had the history for the last hundred odd years, but not going back that much. But, uh, yeah, no wonder it's so famous I mean, as the well, thing about know. Sitges as well, for us, it was easy. Everything was easy there. Yeah. The beach right. was close. Kids were happy. I could make money. We had the restaurant to go to. I mean, it was just, everything was just... Well, perfect. we would uh, yeah. the, we'd go to the Chiringuito. When the children got older, they they wouldn't come off the beach till about nine. And then they meet us at the Chiringuito. And this was always our routine, right? So then we have a drink So I there. got to know the owner very well and... Yeah, of the restaurant nice. as well, yeah, they were great. And then we'd cross over to the Santa Maria, yeah. and then the that was, you know, they had 20-odd chefs, but it was all oh, yeah. deluxe, you know. The guys had their uh, dicky black and white yeah. on and w white tablecloths. The kids would, we'd send the kids over to reserve a table because yeah. I'd be selling <laughs> paintings right in front of them. And then uh, yeah. we, I'd run over and sit down. We'd have our... And we'd get our... Uh, Prawns, well, you get garlic, your, prawns, garlic, prawns, and gambas al hilio. Gambas al hilio, and then we'd have our mm. meal. And the, the waiters would come over sometimes. He'd sometimes say, leave his paintings on <laughs> the other leave side. The paintings, and they'd come over and say, I think you've got a customer, you better run over there. <laughs> yeah, so I'd run crazy. over and sometimes sell a painting, come back and pay for the meal and pay for it. Just, <laughs> With the <laughs> It's crazy. It <Yeah. laughs> was ridiculous. Yeah, yeah, the waiters used <laughs> to love that, actually. You, you so often needless left to say, it. everybody was keeping an eye on the paintings <laughs> for me. Yeah. <laughs> Cause Cause they were working. Yeah, they thought they'd get a they're, tip they're, if they they got right. Oh yeah, hay un cliente, pa. Hay un cliente, rápido, rápido. Because their livelihood it's depended hilarious. on your your livelihood. That's yeah, good. exactly. Yeah, sure. yeah, yeah, that's right. The bigger the more money I made over the road, the more money they get. Well, well Paul made uh, at uh, one thirty-two. He always made uh, you know what we call lunch or dinner, and then every night, every we, evening, we evening, go to the restaurant. You know, but the kids, huh. I don't know, they'd have anything. They fish. I mean, in those days, I think for one, two, three, four, five of us. Yeah. It would be like a hundred euros for five people. But Alejandro was, and that's with including us. wine, lots of wine, <laughs> and uh, yeah. garlic prawns. The whole luxury of that, you know what I mean? Yeah, so, so it was really quite. Well, quite Spain is one of enough. the best for food in Europe, you know, for restaurants. Mm. Because and so you're living quite, different. you're living quite well at this time. I mean. In terms yeah, of sure um, in terms sure. of money making and and, and career, well, we're always everything's able going to make fine. Money with the paintings, yeah. That mm. yeah. Doesn't matter where we are in the world. Or if we just, and we're promoting. I just go out and make money. It's like going to the going to the yeah. money tree. T tell us a bit about the briefly about the the, the geography of Sitges is quite uh, unique as well. It's not like a lot of other seaside towns, right. is it? Because it there's a well, there's a there's a, a very long promenade which is they've been added to because it used to be like a dirt promenade just like a gravel not sort of, sort of dirty oh, golden sand gold, sort of idea. it was sort of sandy type yeah. of uh, promenade but then they built a, 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 a terrazzo one which stretched all the way down for like about a mile to the other hotels the big hotels at the end but you mm. also had the the most impressive was the old church oh, the old church of course and the that steps. took you when you went up that rocky to San Sebastian cliff. Beach, on yeah, the then side. you went over to the other beach, That's right. and that is just uh, and then incredible. They uh, have, in the last twenty five years, they've de redeveloped the whole port. So mm -hmm. in the port itself now, there's like fifty or sixty restaurants, uh, yeah. which are quite quite fascinating as well. 
And so the whole stitches, the whole of stitches stretches the 19th now. 19th century quite architecture. A couple of miles well. long stitches. Yeah. yeah. What, what's great about stitches was that you have a lot of excellent examples of the 19th century architecture, and you do have a lot of villas. Luxury villas. Which is uh, really yeah, something yeah. as well. And it keeps it, actually, it keeps. There's a golf course at one end. Yeah, as well. and you, you don't have like all these. Yeah, I know a lot of people may like that, and, and that works out. But you sort of, they've kept it very uh, select. and Because it's expensive. Yeah, I suppose. Compared to Spain, compared to yeah. lots of other places. And you don't yeah. have parking right on no. the beach, which a lot very of... Very yeah. difficult to Yeah, park. a lot yeah. of uh, resorts did that. You which pay park. Mm. It's, it's actually... Terrible. That. I, in the end, when I was there, we were paying the same 300 yeah. euros a month for the car. 300 euros to park the car. Yeah, but that's everywhere. Cannes was the same. And Cannes was the same, yeah. yeah. It's not cheap to park yeah. a car in France or Spain. <laughs> yeah, well, that's true. And there's a lot of people. Especially if you want to be on the beach or by the beach. You know? yeah. yeah, Yeah, it's but, a nightmare, yeah. That, that's, I mean, I, we spent a week there and we stayed near yeah. the... Ni- Near the marina, around the back there somewhere. Oh, right, yeah. And what's, yeah. What, what I liked about it was that was that you'd go to one beach and you take a walk and the walk takes you through sort of through windy, old windy old town where you get lost and you come across different yeah, pastorias lovely, or you yeah. come across the church and then you find yourself open yeah. up into the second beach. And it's it's right. sort of, there's a nice unpredictability to w- yeah, where you walk so around. It's, it's, it's very homey. Ali, I think we better move on to um, to returning back to to Vancouver. Yes, so, yes, yeah. So we're going back to Vancouver for the Basque well, we show. Get, Is that right? That's, that's right. The, and, and a very important, like I think we just get back three days before school starts. That's Maybe right. four, yeah. right? I mean, you don't need any more anyways. Tala start uh, her French immersion at that time. Uh, later, they do go to the French school, but and Anton with the French uh, kindergarten. So, mm. yeah, they'd come from Spain speaking all Spanish, and then they're going to start French. And uh, yeah. still, we had to be back for, I think, September 8th for that. And then, of course, we're very aware that we've got Expo year in front of us, and everything had fallen through on the 700 oh, square right. foot area uh-huh. that we had with the other artisans you know because in the end uh, expo wanted all money up front and the others said no so we were back to square one wow thanks to paul and joanne for taking us with them on this tour of the Basque Country and Stitches. This has been another episode of the Agartua Art Chronicles podcast with me, Ed Hoskin. The podcast was edited and recorded by myself and was produced by Tali Agartua and me. The music is by Hoskin and Clark. And join us next episode to hear about one of the major works in Paul's career. Bye for now. <laughs>